Hello and welcome to this special edition of NJ Biz Conversations. I'm your host, Jeff Kanaj, coming to you today from the Newark Summit, big real estate conference here in Summit. Our first guest is Adina Bio. She is the founder of Adina Bio Companies. Adina, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for thanks for stopping by. Yes. Um, the origin story of your company is actually pretty fascinating. So I, I wanted to hear that first of all. Um, my understanding is you started with an IHOP restaurant. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So and then you've grown into what now? Tell tell the story of both. Yeah. So we company. started with an IHOP in 2007. Now we have four IHOPs. We have our signature brand that we started, Cornbread Farm to Sell. Right. Um, we have four locations, and we have another concept called Brick City Vegan that we have two locations in Montclair and Newark. Right. So, and we also have a real estate development arm that do affordable housing development coupled with mixed use and just trying to sort of how do we connect local communities with developments that are happening in that neighborhood. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, these are all in and around Newark, yes? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. All in and around Newark. Okay. So, what you you were out just on a panel, I believe, on uh, mixed-use retail. Um, and so, what is the what was the takeaway that you think people should should come away from from that discussion and from this conference in generally about doing business in Newark, in and around Newark? What what is it? What what what's it like for you? I think for me, the one takeaway is that Newark is happening. Newark is not lacking of talent. Okay. Newark is now you know this city that's lacking in local population. Newark have all of the bones, all of the things it need to be an extremely impactful city, and which okay. it already is. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest takeaway is that if you want to come to invest in Newark, you have to dig your hills and talk to the local community. Anything you bring in Newark, and you get your local community, that's the West Ward, the South Ward, the Central Ward, really buy in. Anything else from the outside is just gravy on top. Okay. So I think for me, the biggest takeaway is if you come to do business in Newark, invest in the local community. That is your that is your secret sauce. Okay. So what does it mean for Newark, for, for businesses in Newark, to have a conference like this here? And so it, uh, our, our listeners can't see, but there's, there's a pretty good crowd here today. It's, it's very busy. It's, it's a huge conference, and I think it's only going to get bigger. Okay. Because Newark is no, not. the largest city in New Jersey, population-wise. And I think we have train, we have airport, we have... We, you are 10 minutes away from the World Trade Center, right? You have a population that's educated. You have a population that want to stay in Newark. I think, for me, those are all ingredients that make a city wonderful to do investments. Okay. So you're bullish on Newark. You, you, you would encourage people to come and, and do this. The same kind of thing you're doing. I was raised in Newark. Okay. I do business in Newark. I'm going to continue to do business in Newark. Okay. For me, Newark is where it's at. Okay. Now, um, uh, well, I've talked to a lot of folks who, who run businesses in Newark, and they're very impressed and have been impressed with the with Mayor Baraka's administration. I'm curious as to how your 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 relationship with the with the local government is, and and what you think of, of the job the mayor is doing. I think he's been gossiping. Okay. During the pandemic, he dug his heel in, got the understanding of what really local businesses needed. Yeah. He is, um, I always saw a feminist mayor. <laughs> and what I mean by that is that he have a deep respect for women entrepreneurs. Okay. He has this thing that if Newark is going to get better, Newark is going to get better by some people that are here coupled with bringing other people inside. And he's a very, very uh, mayor. And he know the history of Newark. So he's not guessing. He know where Newark been. He know where Newark potential is. And he has a plan to take Newark forward. Okay. All right. Now, about your company in specific, you've got a couple of projects, I, I believe, in the works. What's the status of those? What are, your, what are you looking forward to in terms so, of what, when those are going to be ready? So, 2020, I became the first African-American woman to be awarded a NAPAS in tax credit. That project will be in the ground next month. Okay. Um... For me now, it's really how do I continue on this journey of creating really impactful, affordable housing okay. for underserved communities, okay. for uninvested communities. So for me, 
that path just get really clear every day as I come to conferences like this. Mm. Because the most vulnerable, and I always say this, the next civil rights conversation of our time is going to be housing. Okay. Who get to develop it and who get to live where and when? Okay. So for me, I'm passionate about how do we have housing that don't displace people? How do we really do impactful development? Because we are designing the north of tomorrow. Right. So that has to be inclusive and that has to be equitable. Okay. And is that is that happening? Because I mean, I've talked to, again to lots of folks who are worried uh, always when 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 you talk about redevelopment that. The, the, what they call the Brooklynification of, yes. of Newark, yeah. so the gentrification that that can force out longtime residents. Yeah. Are you confident that that's that's that sort of thing is not going to happen in Newark? I I think the conversation the mayor the mayor is happening, the conversation around you know his affordable housing initiative, the conversation he's not reacting, he's being proactive. Okay. Right. So if you develop houses in Newark, you have to carve out. 20% of that for affordable uh, residents. Right. His aggressive push to 100% affordable housing, his cutting out the red tape to making sure that we build these houses in a very quick manner. I think if you have a mayor like that, you can rest assured that Newark is going to change, but it's not going to leave its current residents behind. Okay. All right. And now that's the, it's it's interesting that you said that because the next question I was going to ask you was whether there needs to be some sort of policy, either state level, local level, county level, is if if you could sort of wave a magic wand and bring some some policy into into existence that would support and encourage the building of affordable housing, what would it be? One of the policy that I think is any housing project that have more than fifty five percent affordable housing should be put on a fast track. Okay. And what does that mean by fast track? Expedited zoning hearing, yet expedited planning board hearing, expedited permitting process, expedite the building of affordable housing. That is what I would do. Okay, well, that's uh, permitting, streamlining permitting. That's something I hear over yes. and over. Is streamlining permitting, streamlining the um, approval process, streamlining access to affordable housing. Right. Is that what I would use my ma- magic wand for? All right. Before I let you go, I'm curious as to what you think of the economy in general. What uh, What are you looking forward to in 2024? It's December now. We're 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 getting toward the end of the year. Starting to think about the future. What 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 is the What are you What are you expecting? What are you planning for? I hope the fact get loosened up on the interest rate. That's, that would be good. I really do. <laughs> I think we're seeing a tightening. There's a great of tightening of funding for projects. Okay. Interest rate are blowing up performers. Right. I think I would look forward to the Fed decreasing the interest rate. Okay. Well, at least not going up anymore. Right. Well, I think, yeah, that. <laughs> I wonder if, 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 it's, if they're actually going to start pulling back, but, uh, but perhaps... So. Perhaps uh, it sounds like they've, they've basically leveled off at this point. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah. All right. And I would also like to see more funding, <laughs> more funding for women businesses, particularly black and brown women businesses. Okay. I think that we have been sort of left and said, go fend for yourself. I would like to see more initiative put aside for financing women-led businesses. Right. I access the capital. Access Certainly the a, capital a huge problem. Yeah. Huge one. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Adina Bio, thank you very much for stopping by. I really thank appreciate you, it. Jeff. Thanks thank to you. meet you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Welcome back to NG Biz Conversations at the Newark Summit. Our next guest is Angelo Genova. He's the co-founder and chairman of Genova Burns here in Newark and the chair of this, uh, this event. Angelo, yes, Miles Gone. Welcome to me and welcome to you. Thank you. Thank you. So I wanted to start there with, with the event. Um, you're the chair, you're the MC. you've got a lot to do today. How's it going? Well, it's going great. You know, the uh, reaction has been uh, surprisingly good. Uh, the number of attendees has been beyond expectations. Uh, we're excited by the fact that uh, the interest in Newark is so high that we can attract almost a thousand people. I think understand we're here today, so we're really happy about that. What What do you think accounts for for that interest? Because I mean, we've been talking to people all day. Um, we've gotten the sense that there is a, the what, what they're telling us that there's a, there's a sense of excitement about the city. You're, you do business here. 
Um, what do you think? What What is it like doing business? Well, I moved my law firm from the suburbs here 15 years ago at a time when law firms were moving out of Newark. And I was hoping it would stem the tide a little bit, and maybe it has, but I saw at that time with the leadership of uh, Mayor Booker at the time that Newark showed some promise. And and Mark Burson, who passed away today, a known uh, developer here in the city, a friend and a client, encouraged me to move my law firm here. So I kind of feel like a little bit of a pioneer in the uh, in the modern sense, although there are people that are me here a lot longer than me. But it always struck me that as a lawyer that the significant institutions of the legal profession are here. The federal courts, the state courts, the county government, state government offices, that so much activity is here, it makes little sense to not have a presence and a meaningful presence. So I also concluded that that's true of a lot of industries and a lot of businesses that do uh, business in our state, whether it's the airports, the railroads, the roads, uh, access to government, all of those things contributed to it. So today isn't so much a surprise to me. What's more of a surprise to me is that there are so many with the high level of excitement because we're coming off of COVID. There's a there's a sense that the real estate industry is fragile right now, that interest rates are suppressing people's interest in, in growing uh, or in building. But then here you have Newark, which offers promise of an opportunity. And you have virtually every major developer in the state present today, many, many professionals in the in the real estate community. And I think they're coming here for several reasons. One, curiosity. They really want to know what's going on. And from people that are the movers and shakers and involved in the trenches. Two, they want to create synergies and their own networking for their own purposes. And three, to see for themselves what really is happening, to look out these windows and see the new towers going up, to see behind you the uh, the reinvention of the Gateway Center, to sit in a building that was a warehouse. Uh, Jerry Gottesman years ago uh, bought this property, had parking lots all around it, had different visions for it, and it manifested itself and to see firsthand. So we're excited that people reacted. We're excited that people participated. We're excited that it drew this amount of registrations. And I think that it's only going to be the foundation for next year's Newark summer to be uh, larger, more meaningful, more exciting with greater progress. Uh, when, when you moved here 15 years ago, did, did people say to you, what are you doing that for? That's cool. That's <laughs> well, people said, are you, they didn't say I was nuts. They just simply said that, you know, Newark, is that going to be an attractive place for your employees? Are you going to feel comfortable in Newark? Are they going to have a work day that's going to be um, uh, the kind of work day they can leave the building and enjoy the, the benefits of the, of the city and, and the streetscape? I moved my office to the north end of town, town on what is now Harriet Tubman Square. Across the street is the Newark Museum. Across the street is the Newark Public Library. Across the street is Audible. Across the street is the Rutgers Business School. And that area of the city is enjoying a a, uh, a rebirth in a lot of ways. Berkeley College is there. Uh, so the answer to the question is, was there apprehension? Yes. Uh, in the 15 years that I've been here, have there been any incidents which deter my employees? Uh, safety incidents are like from coming in? No, there haven't been. Have they come to enjoy the fruits of what exists in Newark? Yes. Um, the curveball that all of us has gotten thrown is this idea of hybrid work and remote work. You know, I'm experiencing that as much as Mars Wrigley is experiencing that or Prudential is experiencing that. If you look at the last 10 years in Newark, you look at the investment that Prudential made in the uh, building of its new tower. 15 years ago, when I came to Newark, the uh, Prudential Center was being built. You look at the residential towers that are being built, the role of the Performing Arts Center. These things have been meaningful. Uh, I think the mayor said it well today uh, when he when he talked about his vision, which is different than other cities, which which you know some would argue is not developer community, but I, I, uh, developer user friendly. But I would say you know he he talks about embracing what's there and taking it and not abandoning it, but building upon it. And I and I think that's what his vision is, and I think people are beginning to understand it, and that's what we see in his in his approach to affordable housing. And, and, and no doubt the support that comes from the, from the government, from uh, Governor Murphy's administration, through the incentive programs and all, all of those things have been catalysts for what I think is a continuing renaissance of the city, slow but measured, 
deliberate, methodical, but it's happening. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned uh, that he's at the air walk around Rutgers. That whole the Universal Heights section, that there's a real street life there now. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, hadn't, I worked, he worked at Newark years ago, and when I first came back for the first time, I was amazed at what, what it was like. It's, it was an accident, real city now. So sure. I'm sure. He, yeah, and I, I went to law school here in Newark, and I remember Newark in the late 70s, and I remember going to law school here, and I knew what that area of the city was like. I remember what it was like to walk from the law school to pick up the bus and Broad Street and what was then called Washington Park and and, and and what you had to look for and what you wanted to stay away from. And it's a whole different feeling. People are moving here. I think its biggest challenge is to develop the streetscape. Uh, and, you, and if you were listening to the program, that's been a recurring theme. Develop the streetscape. You know, you look at, at Down Neck, you look, you look on Ferry Street, it, it's not about Newark. It's about people investing and creating the vibe. And how do you create the vibe? And I think the pedestrian bridge from Mulberry Street is going to begin to do that flow. You know, if you go to the, the great European cities and, you know, whether it's Rome or whatever, these are walking cities. These are these are cities where people move throughout it, where go from event to location to destination. And, um, you know, there was an era when Newark built bridges across its streets. You know, yeah, that 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 doesn't happen now. Right, to get you know. people off the street. Right. You don't have yeah. that. That, which is really necessary. Right. The, the bridge that's being built now is to connect communities. It's not the kind of bridge that was built decades ago, which was to get people off the street. Well, I, I mean, I, and I could hear in your voice that with people who life would do or get care about it, really go. Yeah. And yeah, well, I'm kind of a, I'm a, I'm a, an outsider and moved in. I, I, I grew up in another part of New Jersey and ended up here many years ago and kind of fell in love with the area and, I hope my law firm and I hope Genova Burns and I hope our presence has continued to to add to uh, that success. Before I let you go, just curious, what, is, what does it mean for the city to have an event like this? You know, I'm glad you asked that question because I've been talking to a few people and uh, I, I, I think it means a lot of things. I mean, I, I it's actually gone beyond my expectations. I, you know, I, I thought on an academic substantive basis, it would be a you know, a good thing people needed to hear, get the details, get the facts of what's going on. When I walk around this room and the networking I'm seeing and the energy I'm seeing and that, oh, you really do work here or you're thinking about doing work here or how can I help you do work here? You know, what can we do together? I think it's creating a, a sense of collaboration that went beyond my expectations. I was very happy that the mayor was here. Right. Uh, and I was very happy the mayor was here to field questions. And I, I don't think they were all softballs, I hope. I think there was a little bit of a mixed bag. And, you know, he answered he answered pretty thoroughly what his vision is and, and made good arguments for why his vision can work. Okay. Well, I know you got work to do. I will let you get back. Thank you. And thank you to New Jersey Biz, New Jersey's preeminent business publication that we should all read. Uh, thank you very much. And to to know to know the burn of thanks again it's well okay welcome back to uh, this special edition of NJ Biz Conversations at the Newark Summit I've been joined by my colleague managing editor Jessica Perry and our next guest who is Anthony Smith he is the executive director of the Lincoln Park Coast Cultural District here in Newark Anthony welcome thank you now, you, we, we wanted to talk to you today because you've got an interesting project going um, in Lincoln Park uh, at, a, at a historic church. Um, I think it's the South Presbyterian South Park, Presbyterian South Park Presbyterian Church, which you are turning into a multifamily residential complex. Yes. So, um, it's a project that's been a little long time coming. Uh, we uh, started it in 2008, but the market crashed. And so it just created a lot of uh, problems in that development. And I see it. Okay. In the head, we're building our the 70 units of housing. Okay, they're back in the facade, along with our permanent office space, and um, uh, I, I, in the lower level, having a like a speakeasy yes. or that uh, air community room, so that we can have uh, our emerging artists, uh, the film that says, uh, like the blue note. Oh, okay, and, but also have our, our office curly on what sneak with an uh, mix. Right. For the, for those for listeners who aren't familiar with with Newark, this is right on Broad Street, um, and the, the church itself is is actually fairly distinctive looking. Yes. Yes, it is. So it's it's directly across from Newark Symphony Laurel. Right. It's uh, at the gateway of the Cif city of Newark, as it's you off the viaduct, next to the historic Lincoln Park, which is another project that we had blown over to 3.5 million dollar appropriation. 
Okay. Uh, so I remember that church is historic because Lincoln spoke there on his way to his generation. Right. That is Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Lincoln, is old. Lincoln is uh the third oldest city in the United States. Okay. You know, so when he was on his way, uh, uh, he stopped there just because the was a revelation and the park was called Sour. Okay. But after he's Abbey was there, they chose the name to Lincoln. Okay. And and that area of Newark actually, um, you you mentioned Symphony Hall. Um, I, I once I spoke with uh, Tanisha Nash Laird, uh, uh, who was the former was the former CEO, and there's a lot going on down there, <laughs> or there should be. <laughs> um, so, can it, how does how does what you're doing fit in with with everything else that's going on in that district? So we're working collectively together. So you have Mel Talia, you know, he's the president and CEO right. of North Symphony Hall. You have me, Zach, who's where I fit it there. And what we're doing, we're working in t- collectively together because. With all the uh, development that's happening, over 800 units of housing is going to be come on board in the Lincoln Park area in the next two to three years. Okay. And that's going to change the trajectory of that community. Uh, but having Stephanie Fall as a uh, acre institution and then right directly to the street, having the church facade project, right. those are like the turnkey project okay. that's going to shift the trajectory of that land. Okay. Um, and, and where are you now with, with, uh, with, with, with just let's start with the, with the church facade project. So with the church facade project, um, we're, we're uh, working our way to be candy boy at Okay. You know, so we, 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 uh, Gisler, so you're right in the middle of it now. Right in the middle of it. Gisler was our architect. Okay. Uh, and they did an amazing job. Uh, uh, the motive space, gold with equities. And so we got the landmark scrutiny. So now we're going through a planning board approval or time. And we're excited to hear the mayor just talk about now, uh, because development is happening at such a pace here, they're creating a second plan to do it. Okay. Because it, things need to be approved. And so we're excited about that. So, so we're working through that. And uh, we're embarked to have the building done within the next two years. Okay. All right. And are these market rate residences or, or affordable? It, it, they're both. Okay. They're both. Uh, uh, a market and affordable. Uh, and of course, we have the exclusionary zone laws in our city. So anything over 30 units, uh, right. 20% has to be a federal in any way. Right. They do some uh, our capital stack, what would aspire at other uh, projects. Well, they say uh, uh, securing funds to uh, the project. You have all those different uh, yeah. check box. You have to check for it. So it'd be a great community that has everyone living there. Okay. And so tell me then a little bit about the the, the park project, the $3.5 million federal appropriation for, to redo the park. So uh, I'm very, very excited about that. Okay. Lincoln Park, uh, uh, all the downtown parks will come. It's like one of the oldest parks in the city of New York, but they're all well designed by Olmstead. Okay. So we did Central Park, he did Weekway Park, they did the downtown parks. And for a long time, um, all the Brown Souls, it was a pass-up park where the Chapag for us about. Park has shifted so much down there that we have to reimagine a park. We have the annual Lincoln Park Music Festival down at, we just finished our 18th anniversary with tens of thousands of people come to the park. And when we uh, went to get appropriation, Senator Pori Booker and uh, Senator Moregas, uh, you know, supported us, got $8.5 million. Okay. To put a permanent stage there, to change the, the electrical infrastructure there, to put a bathroom in there. You know, the lighting and all those different things. So some of the fundamental things in order to continue to have programming there and also to have pop-up um, markets mm-hmm. like they do in Bryant Park and other parks like that uh, to increase the Wi-Fi there. Uh, we're working with uh, Newark Alliance and Rutgers University at uh, Vest Newark on uh, Wi-Fi because it has a low uh, Wi-Fi uh, broadband connection. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that, that, that's why we have the digital divide down there. So it's important that to have all those things built up so that it can have an active park state right. that, you know, uh, all with 700 new um, how, housing units they develop. People want to use park. Right. They want to be a part of the park. So for, for all those things. So it's actually a passion project for me. Okay. I like this project to see that park uh, be, be built and be a mat. Right. And as you say, that's that that really is the gateway to downtown. It's the gateway right. downtown for, 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 for listeners who don't know, if you come off seventy eight, it's like the first thing you see when you come right over the viaduct. And the first thing you see is Lincoln. Right, right. And then you see North City Hall and all of her projects that we're talking about. But it's the the the, uh, the south end of Broad Street. Right. Uh, the north end is where you have in Japan and all of this. But downtown North is only one mile long. Right. And working with the mayor and in, in the creation of the. Uh, arts and education district. It's important that you bring the whole downtown together and so that they can get a walk of the from you. 
Okay. That's well developed. Right. Yes, indeed. So what do you think about this this event? Why, why is it important for you to be here? Why is it, why is it important for this for this to happen here in the city of Newark? I think I, I know last year it happened in Jersey City, but I was glad to land here in Newark. You know why? Because we have a story to tell. You know, there's things happening in Newark. And this is uh, not only an opportunity for uh, all of us to come together that's about uh, working to build uh, and push Newark forward, but it's also an opportunity for people to learn all the great things that's happening in Newark, why you should invest in Newark and move to Newark open a business in Newark, come eat in Newark, because Newark is a beautiful uh, city. Very good. That's a good place to leave it. Anthony Smith, Executive Director of the Lincoln Park Coast Cultural District, thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you'll come back and, and give us a, an update at some point on, yeah. on when, when things are going. Absolutely. I would love to. I would love to. Great. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. And then back to the New York Summit. I'm Jeff Kanaj, Ben J. Biz, my colleague, Jessica Nuri, managing editor. And our next guest is Ashley Nate. She is the chief place real estate. Oh, hi, it's Ashley Nate. Thank you. It's great to be here. Well, that's, that's I don't know if that's the first place I was asked was, um, what do you think of this conference? Um, is why, why are you here? Uh, it is so energizing to be here. Uh, we are so thrilled that the Newark Summit um, finally came to fruition. Uh, you could the energy is palpable, uh, both the you know physical presence of folks and uh, just the amount of uh, energy that there is in the city. Uh, so, yeah, well, that's that, that's interesting. I mean, we've talked to a few people so far. Um, and, uh, one of the main down topics and is he does affordable housing. I'm curious what, what your priorities are at the Bureau of Allies right now, be working in that. Uh... Um, what uh, is on top of mind for us is uh, advancing our commercial corridors uh, so uh, we can help uh, create an uh, arts and education district that is a 24-7 neighborhood um, that has amenities uh, that are appealing for both um, visitors and people, new residents and Newarkers uh, from uh, the other wards outside of downtown. And the, the, the Arts and Education District, obviously, you have some anchor institutions, universities, Rutgers, NJIT, and the SSQ. Yep. The FNJ, so they're accepting you all. Are you here? And see you what they're closing you all. Uh, with, with, with all of them, um, our corporate um, anchors as well, like Prudential and Audible, um, all have a stake in uh, making sure that our uh, retail corridors are thriving. Um, so it's a... a collaborative effort, of course, alongside the city of Newark, Invest Newark, which is the economic development agency. So it really is um, a, 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 a collaborative effort. And I, I see your website that one of, one of your work, they get about all these three quarters. What do you say about what's going on there? That's right. Um, so we have a, a focus on Halsey Street. It is where many of our members are anchored. I um, mean, it already is... Uh, uh, informally, the small business uh, corridor and hub uh, for downtown. What we want to do is make uh, Halsey Street a nationally recognized destination um, that uh, centers its cultural assets, like the ones that you rattled off. Um, and um, the, the fact that there is a high concentration of black and brown businesses on Halsey Street um, and it. Uh, an engine for wealth creation. And so what we're uh, focused on is making sure that small businesses on Halsey Street are um, infused with the capital that they need to scale um, and stay um, while uh, the development is happening around them. We want to make sure that small businesses that are homegrown um, can rise along with uh, the development that's happening in the city. How are you, what kind of perception is your debt? Now, first of all, start to and, oh, mm -hmm. Are people happy here? Are they? Are they? Is there the same kind of energy out there? Uh, the passion that uh, Newarkers have for their city is nothing that I've ever seen uh, anywhere. Um, there, uh, there's uh, a belief in the city uh, um, and, and longstanding hope that um, Newark will will thrive and continue to thrive. Uh, and it's really more about. Uh, correcting perceptions for people who don't know Newark um, and not just people outside the region, but even uh, folks in Essex County um, in New Jersey um, and just uh, elevating out of all of the offerings that the downtown has to offer. So um, Newarkers are excited and folks that are new to town are also really excited about what's happening. That, that was the next question I was going to ask you. 
the sprouts are more. What did he get? He's selling them. What are you talking about doing with there if they need to know? Uh, a, a lot of folks aren't um, aware of all of the cultural um, assets with with NJ Pack, with the uh, restoration of Newark Symphony Hall, um, uh, with a lot of the uh, grassroots arts organizations that have uh, been part of the um, heart and soul and political activism of the, of the city over the decades. Um, so uh, that's one of the things that I um, that think is one of the most exciting is how healthy uh, the arts community is here. Do you get the sense that for some reason? He's the point Lord, yes. So that kind of magnet. Thank you. Well, I'll say yes. Anyway, because then you can see it at Grinnell. Like, that is an example if you read it. That when there's a heart again. That's the. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, we, the, it is slowly changing. Um, there's the perception. We, the other day, we were just talking about the perception of safety. Um, and, you know, if people would not come in droves to the hockey games if they thought that there was, you know, uh, a safety issue. Um, and so it is it is slowly changing. Um, my previous gig to, um, uh, to the role I'm in now, I uh, was at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And um, I actually see some of those same companies that were at the yard coming to Newark um, and because seeing um, the uh, the energy, the excitement um, that folks uh, have for Newark, uh, for Brooklyn, um, the same year. Not that we want to, you know, we're trying to be anything else, but um, I think it is um, eh, indicative of of the, the fact that we're, um, you know, the United States, you know, lines like to do it. So if you say that, I hope you will be getting some data. I would love to. Thanks for having me. It's fantastic. Yeah. Welcome back to NJ Biz Conversations at the Newark Summit. I'm Jeff Kanaj. I'm here now. Our next guest is Calvin Suter. He is the founding partner of Suter, Shabazz, and Woolridge Law Group. Calvin, welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming. I appreciate you stopping by. Um, I've, let's start with, with today's event. Um, what do you think? How did it go? What are, what are your thoughts about what uh, what's going on here? Well, I think this is amazing. I think um, the summit's attendance speaks to the viability of Nork as a great place to come and do business. Okay. And uh, you you do business here. <laughs> yeah. Um, tell us, sell Newark. <laughs> to, to someone who, uh, who's thinking about maybe, you know, maybe I hear a lot of good things happening in Newark. A lot of, a lot of stuff going on. Maybe it's a place for me. What, so I'll say. Born and raised here. Um, and over the years, you see the starts and stops to uh, development. But I think one thing that's been consistent throughout my 40 plus years on this earth is that folks have always seen a potential view. Okay. Um, the difference between now and what I think we've seen in some over, over some of our other starts and stops is that people are starting to realize that potential, right? So you have big buildings that have been built. Um, you have a lot in the pipeline. Um, so I don't think we've ever been in a place where we've had over 15,000 units in the pipeline to be developed. Uh, many of those actually in the ground. Um, I don't think we've ever seen as many cranes in the sky in Nork as we have currently. Mm -hmm. 
um, and the interest from all around the world in doing business here uh, is incredible, right? We have uh, South African companies that have come to North to do business, the companies from Germany here, companies from Australia here looking to do business. And I think that speaks volumes to what we have here. Okay. Now, you mentioned the pipeline. You're involved with, with some of that construction, uh, some really impressive looking buildings um, that were at least planned. What's the status of those? How have you, how have you found the, the process of getting those going? Well, I think like any project, there's the day everyone sees the photo uh, and you get the initial approvals and understanding that that's kind of step one. Right. right. Not step one for the developer, but for the community and knowing what that project is. Um, many of the projects have, have now reached the point of getting permits. Okay. Um, so what we all refer to as the Bear Stadium project, mm -hmm. um, that is a project that would be in the ground today, but for uh, negotiating with the city to, uh, to put public safety um, space within the property. Right. Okay. So they're, they're now considering a, a fire station as a part of that development. So it requires you to take a step back right. and revisit how it all flows. Uh, the Arc Tower, I, I got the permit application to my office today. Uh, so I'm here. So we'll be submitting those before the close of business today. Okay. Um, and we've already submitted permits for the IDT building's uh, demolition. So I think all in all, we're going to see a lot of things move in. Uh, those who have been leveraged well, uh, I think we'll do well in this market. And then there's the, the obvious reality of the financial market being what it is. So those who are less leveraged, less well leveraged, will have to go and find partners and things like that in order to get into the ground. But the larger projects, I'm seeing them moving towards construction within the next year. Okay. Well, that, that was sort of one of my questions was how has the rising interest rates, this kind of environment, is, is that is that causing anybody to pull back or is it easy, are, are people, uh, are, are developers able to deal with that at this point? I think the, it's a, it's a combination of things. Uh, so I think developers are able to deal with it if they were well leveraged. Okay. What we've learned is negotiating with the city and the state, we're able to find what is now, you know, a decent amount of gap funding. So when we were at the three and four percent interest rates and now we're, you know, eight, nine and, you know, as high as 12 in some spaces, that that delta that is missing there, we've been able to go back and, and visit some of our financial stack through relationships with the city and the state. You know, the Aspire program has been very helpful as they revisited that on multiple occasions, revisiting the cost of the affordable housing and how we're able to get the city to contribute to the field, whether it's through redevelopment area bonds or things like that on the affordable housing side. And those have all helped fill the gap. Okay. Now, you mentioned um, dealing with the city and the state. When I talk to developers, I hear that all the time. Permitting is, is such a difficult problem. First of all, I'm curious what, what your experience has been in working with the city on, on permitting. Um, the, the mayor's administration certainly uh, has, has its, its ideas about what development should look like. What is, what is it like working with, with the government? At First, let's start with the city level. I mean, I have a great relationship with the city. And, um, I, I think in that. Going in and dealing with people, whether it's in the permitting process or any process, dealing with people is is a uh, is a uh, 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 interesting feat in and of itself, right? So uh, you, you got to build relationships with folks. Um, you go down, you got to be nice to folks, right? right. I've, I've been in a, to the the building department and seen folks come in and and argue with folks whose job it is is to make sure that you know every box is checked, right? Right. Uh, so you kind of just need to know the process and once you know the process and the people, you know, I don't think it's a, that difficult of a process to enter. Okay. And do you, do you do deal much with the state at this point? Before I do. do. Okay. And then how is that? I mean, again, well, I hear it all the time. <laughs> the permitting with the state level, the, that they're understaffed. It's very difficult to get things. I, what I would say is that's development. Okay. Right. You have to understand development. You don't, yeah. you all these big developments that go across the state or any state and anywhere you go. Mm -hmm. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Right. 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 So the struggle that is development is development. Right. So, you know, my experience with the state is when I need to call HMFA, there's somebody ready and available okay. to help us. Um, if I need to go to the EDA, in fact, I, on two projects, the EDA has called my office to meet with my clients. Okay. So I find that working with the government is, is pleasurable for me. Um, I've fortunately been able to navigate the process with my clients. Um, but I think like in a lot of 
places. If you if you think you can just fill out an application, drop it on someone's desk, walk away, and that it'll be processed in 15 minutes, that's just not. You have a lack of understanding of what the Vero Group is. Now, you said you, you, you're from Newark. Um, I'm guessing that your ties to the area must must really work in your favor um, <laughs> as, you're, as, you're, as, you're, as, you're, as you're as you're doing your work. I mean, you, you know the city, you know the you know the players, you know the history, you know what's... Yeah, I think the difference between myself and some other lawyers, because there's a lot of great lawyers who do business here in the city, um, is that when it comes to the community, I'm a little bit more tapped in. Okay. So, you know, when we go to do big projects, I, I already know what community groups are in the area you know i know the the three or four folks in that neighborhood who are uh more outspoken than in others and uh and it behooves us to just go have a conversation okay uh, so we start there and that has helped us really help really ease the process because those would oftentimes be the individuals who would go into the city and try to slow down the project so that they could get better understanding of mm-hmm. Once they know what benefits there are for the community, it's usually a much easier process. Um, you know, we just got the approvals on the IDT buildings, um, you know, four 40 plus story towers, the renovation of a, a, a quasi historic building. We had one objective. It was almost unheard of uh, in the project in North. Um, and, it, and it really came down to the developer being open enough to have multiple conversations with the community, right? And we knew the objective. Okay. We knew what his concern was, mm-hmm. right? We did everything that we could to address it. Um, but when we realized there were just certain parts of the project that we would not be able to address with that person, you know, and we agreed to disagree. Okay. Right. So what is the biggest challenge? I mean, we, to, to doing to, to working in Newark, to being a developer here, what what is what what do you tell clients they they better be ready for when they when when they come here? I I think they more so than other communities, you should be ready to deal with the community and the hands off. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you want to take a, a hands off approach with the community, yeah. you're going to spend a lot of time in city hall. Look, if you try to figure it out, right? Because you you're, the community could be your biggest ally, right? Or or your greatest foe. Okay. And what we're we're it's it's almost the new year. What are you what are you expecting in twenty twenty four? What are you planning for next year? Um, in, just in general, in terms of the the overall economy, uh, development situation, the environment, the business, yeah, economy, business we're, environment. We're we're wondering what the financial situation is going to be in twenty twenty four. I think that's a real concern just in real estate across the globe right now. Um, but I'm really personally, I'm looking forward to the fact that many of the projects that I've worked on earlier in my career uh, will have ribbon cuttings in the next six months. Okay. Um, so I'm really looking forward to walking into some of the buildings. Um, there's going to be some demolition of some properties uh, and a few more crans going in the sky. Okay. So I'm really looking forward to seeing some really big um environment changing projects beginning here in the city of north right i have full faith that the riverfront stadium project is going to be in okay uh in the next couple of months and right down the street from it we'll have two other 40-story buildings beginning uh we should have the conclusion of tower one on the halo project um with with a um a grand opening of that tower at some point in late 2024 so i, I think that's going to be really exciting um so that that's what i'm looking for the the coming to fruition some of these things that we've been talking about so we can get from the everyone having a conversation about what's been approved to you know folks walking into buildings and the largesse of what that brings to the city okay well i hope we can have that conversation yes, at some point too. next year that'd be great <laughs> all right calvin Suter, founding partner of Suter shabazz and woolridge thank you very much for joining me i really thank appreciate you. it i appreciate it thanks thank for stopping by absolutely <laughs> Hello and welcome to this special edition of NJ Biz Conversations. I'm your host, Jeff Kanige. We are continuing our coverage of the Newark Summit uh, with uh, Adam Pasternak. He is the president of property Manage- management at Russo Development. Adam, welcome. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Um, you were uh, you you were part of the the Newark Summit, a, a fairly large uh, re- gathering, uh, December fourth, of, of real estate professionals and and other interested folks. Uh, you were on a multifamily residential panel. Um, there was a lot of talk about housing at, at, at the summit from some, from the developers and lots of people that I talked to. I'm curious, um, given that, what what do you hope most of the attendees took away from from the discussion that you were involved in? 
Sure. Uh, I mean, the discussion about housing is always, you know, kind of uh, instrumental, right, to for a city, right? There's like certain components and housing is certainly one of them. Um, you know, with Newark, that's uh, you know, obviously been, you know, a city that continues to rise. It's that housing component that we think there's still a lot of opportunity, you know, in the city. And I think as more projects come online, you know, like that, it will only enhance the city, what the city has to offer really for businesses, for, you know, their arts, for, for, you know, obviously retail business and, 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 you know, other commercial businesses. So, you know, I was asked to speak where we just launched our, our first project in Newark, uh, Russo development, you know, has an apartment brand called Vermella. Vermella is, uh, about 5,000 units, uh, now across Northern New Jersey. And we've been circling Newark for years. We have project in Carney's, you know, Harrison, we just, uh, finished, uh, leasing, you know, another project in orange. So truly kind of, uh, you know, having our arms wrapped around Newark. So we're excited to finally have gotten started in Newark. We started leasing last month and, uh, while, you know, there's still a long ways to go. We're starting to see, we definitely seeing like a positive, uh, start there and, uh, you know, excited to be in Newark. I think there's a lot, a lot to, to offer. So. All right. Well, what what uh, what made you finally uh, take the leap? <laughs> and you know, you said you mentioned all the sort of circling around. And you finally got in there. What what convinced you that uh, that this was the right time to do that? Yeah, I mean, listen, it, it's a lot of it's opportunity, and we we had a great opportunity at a project. Uh, we partnered with with uh, Eli Dweck and his 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 group on a, on a piece of land just on the other side of 280 from the Broad Street Station. So we loved you know the opportunity, the land site there, and yes, that's a big component of it. But we also feel like Newark has a lot to offer too. And, uh, you know, we're, you know, it's just, it was probably more of a matter of time. We'd been looking, looking at projects for years and, and this is right in our, our wheelhouse, not only with our apartment brand, but our company is based in Northern New Jersey. At Roof. You know, it's, uh, it's, it, it makes a lot of sense for, for what we do and, you know, for our brand. Okay. Now, when I was talking to the participants at the, at the real estate summit, um, there was a lot of optimism <laughs> and people would gesture at the windows. I mean, you saw the space and, and see all, well, everything that's going on out there, new construction, uh, new, new housing. Um, and, and there was a lot of optimism and a lot of a sense that, that Newark was, was a hot market. Is that assessment realistic as far as you're concerned? I mean, what is it, what is, what is the market in Newark like these days? Well, we we certainly hope so. I mean, like I said, we're we're a little early in our project, but we had a you know a huge investment, you know, in in that project in the city, and uh, you know, so we do think it, you know there's a bright a bright future. Um, I mean, you can't beat like its location, its transportation infrastructure that's already in place. You know, growing you know growing business. You know, like, you know McKinsey's coming into the market. I think that was discussed yesterday. So. You know, the elements are, are all there. I just think, you know, more projects need to, you know, get approved and move forward. And we're, we're excited about that. You know, and you'd think it's competition for us, but you know what? I think all the, you know, more multifamily, like, you know, class A residential that's being built, it'll kind of lift, you know, all ships. Right. Well, that, that's, that, that's what I'm thinking too, is that you, you gotta have people to support the economy. And if people aren't going to, aren't living there and shopping there and working yeah. there and doing, doing those kinds of things, then, then you're never going to get anywhere. So, so there is, there is some cause for optimism and based on what, what you're seeing. Yeah. I mean, there's a, a number of new projects that have you know, been built in over the last just 18 months. So uh, we're, we're one of them. And, you know, I think, you know, we do feel like you need to bring people, pe- you know, I think for some time, you know, while, you know, they were building up, um, you know, like with companies like Audible and Rutgers taking a bigger position, uh, you know, they're a lot of the resident base, at least this was perceived. I mean, I can't speak to it because I, I'm, we're new to the the market, but it's perceived that people would work there and then leave. So right. we want to, we want to keep them, you know, in Newark, you know, obviously it's a, a boon for the entire city for, you know, for, for all the businesses there, you know, I think we've seen like that in other markets. I mean, I know, you know I could speak for, for Russo. We, you know, we developed in Harrison, south of the path 
uh, station, mm-hmm. you know, well before, uh, you know, a couple other projects. And, you know, it's that, that area has grown, grown up and yes. there's more, <laughs> more businesses, you know, we have retail like on, you know, on site in Harrison and that took a little while to get going. But now that there's like really like a, you know, more density and, and there's a real population base, those retail units have, have leased up then you know, I think we're seeing, we're seeing more of that too. So, uh, no, no reason not to think that Newark. Right, well, that's can't that's, right, new. that's right across the river from Newark. So you, <laughs> you would, yeah, and we're seeing a lot of traffic from from Harrison and Kearney and and you know to to our project already. So right. you know, I think people there's a renter base, and you know, if you give them more options, they'll you know they'll explore it, and you know, it's uh, you know, we think what we develop meets what people want, and sure. you know, we'll say. Okay. Um, what, what I did hear though, uh, a, a discouraging word is, uh, the, the cost of, of borrowing, uh, for one thing and, uh, the difficulties in, in permitting, um, are those the biggest challenges Are those the biggest barriers that, that are, that, that, uh, that, and uh, I, those aren't, aren't unique to Newark, but, <laughs> but I imagine that, that in some, in some cases that, that they, those kinds of problems may be exacerbated. Yeah. You know, as far as borrowing, you know, we're seeing that across, you know, all markets just being across the country, you know, it's a shame because there was, there was really good momentum, you know, in Newark and everywhere really, but, but financing's, you know, going to be really challenging and, and, you know, we're already underway and we're moving forward. So for us, you know, I, the way, you know, as I said earlier on, like, I think more projects being developed would, would benefit us, but okay. we may see a little bit of a lull just because of those, those challenges. Now, uh-huh. You know, unfortunately, permitting and, and, you know, entitlements going through the town, you know, with every town, it, it could always be improved. Um, you know, we're, we've been working really closely with Allison Ladd as the deputy mayor, and she's done a great job and in, in, in kind of pushing through what, what I know we needed for our project. And I've heard similar things from other developers, too. So mm-hmm. that's a positive. It sounds like the city's in a good place to, to really kind of not be in any way a hindrance or roadblock. So. That's well, I, I, certainly the mayor doesn't doesn't want to be that. So yeah, <laughs> you know, he's, he, he, I, I get the sense that he's trying to do this carefully, but he really does want to encourage growth in the city. Yeah, which is great. No, okay. Um, and so, what is is there something that that either either the mayor's mayor Barack's administration or the state government should do to make it more to make it easier to do these kinds of things? Is there, is there some sort of policy change that might that might change the dynamic? Yeah, you know, it's not. I'm not really, uh, to, to be honest, I'm not involved on that end for, for Russo. I'm more on the operations side, but, uh, you know, I, yeah, I think, yeah, I know that sounds like they're trying, right? So I, everything I had heard, you know, was positive towards this, towards the city. And, you know, I think like anything else with more experience and, and you know, this is a different type of development maybe that they've, they've seen in a while. So, you know, it sounds like they're, they understand it and that that's important. So, um, yeah, I don't think there's, I can comment on anything specific because not only did I not live in it when we were getting ourselves entitled, but you know, I, you know, it sounds like they're understood. Fair enough. Um, uh, I'm curious then though, uh, just to get your view of, of what, what 2024 looks like. Um, are you confident that, uh, that, that, uh, that, that Northern New Jersey, the state is going to, is going to continue to grow. Um, what, is, what are you, what are you expecting? What are you planning for? Yeah. So, I mean, we're planning for, I mean, re- you know, business growth and kind of, you know, residential apartments being uh, absorbed are kind of two different things. So, you know, I'll speak to probably a little bit more what I'm, I know, which is, sure. you know, residential, like, you know, apartment absorption. And, you know, we don't see any of the fundamentals really changing on the rental okay. side. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, we, we think there's there's room for for more units in Newark specifically and in northern New Jersey and uh, you know we're, we're pretty confident in what we are bringing to the market whether it's Newark or anywhere in North Jersey we have other projects you know going on as well uh, so we, we're, we're pretty feeling bullish about about that um, you know the fundamentals and, and, and rentals seem to you know are gonna stay you know pretty consistent you know interest rates are, are are still very high you know single family home market you know doesn't really offer you know an alternative especially to like the demographics that are a younger professional demographic that you know in newark or in, in more urban areas so uh it's harder to like kind of you know whether it's a combination of people not 
you know, astounding, astounding to, to single family ownership, but also, you know, the interest rate market and the availability of single family homes, it, it, it is in the favor of, of the residential uh, developers. Okay. All right. Uh, finally, before I let you go, I'm curious what you thought of the, the Newark Summit itself. It looked like they had a pretty decent turnout. Was it a useful event as far as you're concerned? Oh, yeah. Uh, I thought that had a great turnout. You know, we spoke at the four o'clock panel. And, and as you know, with some of these some of these conferences, by like as the day gets longer, you know, it, it starts to thin out. And actually, we had a real, really good crowd, um, you know, for our panel, the last good. panel. Right. And, you know, a lot of questions are being asked as well. So I think everybody was engaged and it was great to hear from from the city, um, you know, and then, you know, people that are doing business and are very active in the city, too. So they did a good job lining up like the right people to really kind of speak to what's happening. OK, well, and it sounds like they're they're planning on another one next year. So yeah. perhaps we'll, we'll catch up there and, yeah. and I hope you'll come back at some point and, and, and give us an update on, on what the project in Newark and, and around the states or how are you? Yeah. No, Jeff, we'd love to, you know, give you updates as we are, you know, through our, uh, our lease up. So, uh, hopefully we'll stay close and, uh, right. you can, you can follow our project, uh, successful project, right? <laughs> yes. Thanks. Thank you very much. Adam right. Esternak, president, property management of Russo Development. Thanks for joining me. I really appreciate you taking the time. No, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And thank you all for watching. Until next time, stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye.